story to tell. On December 19 and 20, 1972, American news agencies and newspapers announced, North Vietnam's MiG, has been completely paralyzed. B-52s can rest assured. For night flying MiG, the only equipment to detect the enemy was radar. However, on each B-52 there were dozens of automatic jammers, with a frequency system that overwhelms the frequency range of the radar guidance stations, as well as the aiming radar of the enemy pilots. To deal with MiG attacks from behind, at the rear of each B-52 was a 12.7mm machine gun that was always ready to fire. Its decoy system was also very beneficial, not to mention its massive F-4 Phantom Escort. Shooting down a B-52 seemed like an impossible mission. The zenith of B-52 attacks in Vietnam was Operation Linebacker 2, conducted from 18 to the 29th of December 1972, which consisted of waves of B-52s. Over 12 days, the 52s flew 729 sorties and dropped 15,237 tons of bombs on Hanoi, Haiphong, and other targets. Originally 42 B-52s were committed to the war, however, numbers were frequently twice this figure. During Operation Linebacker 2, 15 B-52s were shot down, 5 were heavily damaged, and 5 suffered medium damage. A total of 25 crewmen were killed in these losses. North Vietnam claimed 34 B-52s were shot down. According to Vietnamese records, on the night of December 27, 1972 North Vietnamese Air Force pilot Pham Tuan, used a MiG-21 MF to shoot down a USAF B-52D Strato Fortress bomber over Mok Chau. Pham Tuan took off from Noi Bai, and little later landed at Yen Bai with the help of the GCI situated in Mok Chau and Sun La. According to Pham Tuan, at 22.20 hours, I was given the order to take off from Yen Bai at a heading of 200 degrees, and broke through the low heavy cloud layer at 200 to 300 meters only to find F-4 in the vicinity. In the meantime I was informed that the B-52s were approaching Mok Chau, and the GCI at Sun La and Mok Chau were constantly updating me on the distance of the bombers, 60 kilometers, 50 kilometers and 40 kilometers. As planned, I jettisoned the fuel tank and climbed to 7,000 meters while applying the throttle to increase the speed. The radars were plotting the route of the B-52s and also warned me of the escort F-4s following them. When I saw a yellow light in front of me, I turned left to 40 degrees, increased my speed to 1,200 km per hour and climbed to a 10,000 meter altitude where the B-52s were cruising. I radioed to the command, I have the target in sight, tally target, request order for the attack. The response of the GCI was, you have permission to fire twice, and then escape, quickly. The Americans were holding formation, keeping approximately 2 to 3 kilometers of separation. I made last minute checks on my missiles, and when I reached the level of the third B-52 pushed the fire bottom on the control stick. I launched two heat-seeking missiles from a distance of two kilometers. Big flames were visible around the second B-52 when I broke sharply to the left and descended to 2,000 meters before landing at Yen Bai. The attacked formation of B-52s immediately dropped their load and returned to base. Later, Pham Tuan became a senior officer of the army, holding the rank of Lieutenant General. He was top Vietnamese ace. Eight confirmed kills. He was first Vietnamese who flown to the space.